Hi, shalom everybody. Okay, we'll try to get straight to the point, but I feel that we must do an introduction. We're dealing with something sacred if we just delve into the words and set themselves, what the Torah tells us, without understanding that what the Torah is. We have to understand it's sacred before we just delve into it as if it's just any other book. Okay, so what is the Tanakh? The Tanakh is the, uh, the Old Testament or the Bible, as we say. And according to the Jewish tradition, and which is what I will try to represent with God's help, it composes of three things really the five books of Moses and then prophets and then writings what does that mean five books of Moses is what the Kadosh Baruch the Hashem what God really told Moses and I get some kind of a prophecy level and he just like that words or the, the, these ideas that God told him kind of flew through Moshe Moses and right through him and he and he just wrote it down each and every word each and every letter even he was was by divine um guidance and those are the five books of moses they are on a higher level of any other of the books of the bible and then and those five books are called in one word torah so those five books of moses torah at the highest level uh to the extent that even when they're written usually on a, on a special parchment by a special person and Throughout the generations, if one letter was missing in these, from the, any of these five books of Moses, one letter was missing or written wrongly, then the whole book was considered not kosher. You cannot use it. So, which is very harsh because, I mean, it, it takes uh, it takes the person who writes it on a parchment, it takes him like at least a year to write it down. Uh, and he has to like go wash himself and everything. He has this whole procedure to like, stay holy. And again, one letter missing or, or not in the right place or written wrongly, then the whole thing, you cannot use it. You cannot use it in reading um, in the Beit Knesset in the temple. But on the other hand, so that's very harsh, but on the other hand, that's what um, makes sure that what we have till today is, very, is authentic. It hasn't changed with it throughout the centuries because we know that it couldn't. With all these rules, it couldn't have changed. So what we have to date, even till today, we believe to be authentic and exactly with the same words exactly the same the same writing each and every word and every letter exactly as was given to Moshe Rabbeinu by God those are the five books of Moses from the creation of the world till Moses passed away till Moshe passed away right in the verge of the entrance of uh, getting into Israel and then we have the prophets and uh, the writings which we'll get much later I much much later on <laughs> but but that's important. Let's, if we're starting from Torah, that's what important for me to say, to, to really give it the holy place that it deserves, to understand that it's from heaven, and therefore it can be um, lightly discussed. You know, just every, every word is important. And, that's, the, and the Jews give it a lot and lots of um, importance because even to, in, in a way, it's considered the blueprint of the creation or it's just like if somebody builds a house, then usually has a plan before. So the Torah is as if, it's as if the planning of the house, it's the setting of the house. If God created the world, he gave us the Torah as if to teach us and show us the plan, the layout of the world of the creation and what we're supposed to do with it. This place, let's say this room is for you to expand, to use as a kitchen, you know? So you have to use it like this and like this. On the one hand, it's like a blueprint. On the other hand, it's like, it's like a manifest, it's an instruction book to tell you how what to do in this world. If you're here, you might as well know where you where where God has put you and what you have to do with whatever you see, and make the best of it. So that's it. Let's start.